But uh, back uh, 2007, I came back to Rapid City. Um, my father lived here at the time. Um, and when I came back to town, um, I, I didn't know, um, I didn't, didn't have any friends. Um, I had family here, but I didn't really kind of know them. We ended up kind of bouncing around between uh, relatives, family, friends, and um, eventually we kind of wanted to kind of be, be by ourselves, so we ended up uh, uh, moving into a motel. So in 2010, I was relocated um, from St. Paul, Minnesota after becoming homeless. My dad had kicked me out of my home. Um, and I relocated to Rapid City on a Greyhound bus um, and by relocating I was considered a homeless student in Pennington County so I was trying to find a place to stay I was reaching out networking trying to figure out you know people where I could stay I see a lot of great conversations happening um, as well as awareness it's the conversations that are creating the awareness for these issues among our community um, because when I was in high school it was very much an invisible thing of like nobody gets it nobody understands what's going on nobody understands what's going on with me I'm just this kid surrounded by a bunch of other teenagers who are surrounded by these healthy families um, and you know talking with Stacy from McKinney Vento was a great eye-opener because it was the awareness of I'm not the only one in this school that is experiencing poverty and homelessness you know and I'm I'm grateful for the things that I have and I'm grateful for the support I'm receiving from this program. So definitely something to be grateful for. I mean, Toys for Tots, I mean, all these organizations, you put them all together and it's like you can never um, go without food. Um, you have gas and um, there's options where um, you can um, you can probably find work. You can just um, start from square one and then apply for housing and then wait for that. But meanwhile, just um, keep at uh, these programs and then they'll um, point you in the right direction. I think all in all, uh, um, without these programs, um, I think a lot of people will be hurting. Um, I did a poverty simulation at Western Dakota Tech just a couple months ago, it feels like, um, because I was receiving the emails. And, you know, in hindsight, I'm surrounded by all these people that aren't aware of the, the poverty issue. and and the amount of energy it takes to get to this agency and do this and get your food stamps and get your social security check. And then, you know, it was such an eye opener for all these people and hearing, wow, I, I had no idea, you know, and the aftermath of the whole project, the presentation. And I'm sitting there silently like this, this is a, an awareness of what my life has been like, you know. Mm -hmm. So definitely having um, opportunities like that for the public to see and feel the emotions that are occurring in other families in our community is huge for the progressive change within among Rapid City. So. From a person, a family that's living on the streets, it's, it's hard to get to one place to another um, to get to find out about these uh, places. And one hard to be a good location and play where it's at, where people can just walk over there and okay. Then, so, um, instead of um, waiting for rides or, or having a motivation to even, you know, to even go there. So I believe um, the creation of One Heart is One Heart Campus is something that will benefit our community immensely. Um, having a specific structured program that is different for everyone and everyone's needs will be incredible because I mean we are all different humans and we all thrive differently we come from different backgrounds culturally economically all of that so I really look forward to um, th this program happening